Uh, I have worked in a rural church for four years and a large suburban church for 10. And then I had a calling out of the church to work at the United Way of Calgary and area. And it was when I left the church that I realized how important all the interactions that were going on in the city uh, were and how the church wasn't in the game. There was so many great things happening and the church was on the sidelines. So the image I think of is, it's like there's a big football game going on and we used to be in the game as the quarterback and now we're benched, we're on the sidelines. And the game's still going on and we're standing there going, can we play, can we play? Uh, because I think lots of the ways in which the church and culture have changed, we've moved ourselves by things we did to the edge uh, that is sometimes not in the game. And lots of really great things were happening in the city that I learned about. And so it was when I was there that I got to know the city and how people were seeking to promote change and good things in the city. And so when this church came open, um, it was a small dying church in a neat part of the town, city. And uh, what they wanted was leadership and a connection to the community. And I thought it was great that they were saying that up front. They, want, they wanted a leader and they also wanted to make inroads with the neighborhood. So it was uh, pretty easy to come and have a great conversation about what's possible. I would also say one of the neat things about this church is was it was sometimes when it has a near-death experience, which it is, you know, 40 people, um, they were ready for change. So they weren't clinging to the past. They were saying, we want to honor our past, but we want to move forward. So it was, to me, it was a dream. Well, what I would want to say about how we're organized is I'm being very careful not to organize it like every other United Church. And so we are not rushing, when we have a vacancy, we're not rushing to fill it. We're not trying to have a whole whack of committees doing their stuff. Um, and I'm trying to be very intentional about what is the church of the future look like when you want to have honest engagement with people and bring their skills or their gifts. The church used to say, oh, if you had a pulse, we'll take you. And they would just sort of take anybody and shove them in and do a job. We're being very intentional about that. So as an example, we invite people to do a spiritual gifts inventory where they actually figure out what their, what their gifts are and then we can help place them in an in a organizational piece within the church that honors who they are and what they've got. I mean, so often we get the wrong people doing the wrong job. So try to get the right people in the right place or uh, good to great, the leadership book would say, get the right people on the bus, the right people off the bus. And that's, that's a good metaphor to think about how the church should run. So we're very careful leadership-wise. We uh, want the right voices at the board. Uh, we want the people who have, have got a, an ability to commit some time. Program-wise, we've done uh, Living the Questions and Saving Jesus, and we're doing a new book study. But the, the conversations need to be about what's going on in, this, in, in, the, in the world, and how does it connect? So even in those classes, we have uh, one guy who comes and doesn't believe in God at all. He's there to push the group, challenge us, help us uh, think about ourselves and how we, uh, how we think. So we try to do what I would call Christian formation, our spiritual nurture. We also have um, In From the Cold, which is a program to put us in touch with people in the city who have no homes and try to work together to support and nurture those folks. The building is very busy, has a play school of 50 kids uh, every day in the, in the basement here who've been here for 25 years, the play school's been here. But we also have built bridges, and I think this is really key for churches, to build bridges with the neighborhood. So we have a poverty group that I happened to connect with when I was at United Way, and they needed rental space. We've created a space, there's four staff people in the office, in the church here. They pay a minimal rent, but they're doing great uh, poverty work within the city. And why that's really good is that when, when they hold meetings, they'll have 35 people from the city come to our church just to be in a room of the church to do their work. And it's a really helpful model, I think, of building the bridge. They do the work, and, and we support them through the housing and through people who participate there. But I think the church has to build bridges with the community and those who are already doing great uh, church things. So I would say at this point, um, the other thing we do, we've done some, some fun hospitality. People want to get to know each other. They want to know who people are. 
So we had a progressive supper this year as an example, and I said I would like to see somebody do it. Two people volunteered. I thought if we had 30 people, that'd be great. There was 85 people showed up to eat in different people's homes uh, on a particular evening. And it was just a chance to sort of build a bridge again with people uh, who were on the journey with them. So I would just caution and say, we're not trying to do church the old way. We're trying to figure out what's the new way. We're living in a really exciting time. I mean, I think the church has a huge opportunity uh, to connect with people because I believe the church is doing lots of great things. Um, I, I, I would say that this church is trying hard, really hard, by accident, really. Not with their furrowed brow, but just trying really hard to keep up with who's coming, to be willing to say yes to various ideas uh, or ways of being. Um, th this church is what I would say at this point, just a little bit built on sand, to use a biblical metaphor. That is where we got lots of people here. We're sorting through where do we stand and on what? And so that's our process right now. We're just beginning a visioning process and it's gonna be about discovering what do we believe, what's our values, what's our belief, and what do we wanna do in the future? So that's a bit in process. Uh, at this point, we're just, we, for the last three years, we've been just going, saying to ourselves, do worship, do it well, provide programs during the week uh, that invite people into dialogue and conversation with each other. And, and we'll, uh, we'll see what the future holds. But uh, right now, uh, we're very excited about who's here. There's a great energy. People are happy. People are also coming to church at this time in their life. It's very interesting. In 20 years of ministry for me, in the last few years, I have noticed how people are calling the church and saying, what are you doing about homelessness? What, what, are you, what is your state on the environment? What is your... Uh, interest in um, the city. They're, uh, they're calling with issues and questions about social justice, and that is a really interesting draw. And people are not interested in, people are very interested in doing things, and so you have to be open to that invitation. And so I guess what I would say is right now, we are doing things as well as we can, and we need to r raise that bar up. Lots of churches just say, oh, we'll do okay. I think we have to raise the bar and say, no, we'll do is this excellent or we won't do it. And that's really different in church land. I have a colleague in executive directions who said to me, very honestly and boldly, he doesn't go to church, he said, my experience of the church, that is my memory of the church, is the church would do something and it would do it badly and say, in the name of the Lord, and suddenly it would be okay. He said that, as a musician, he's a musician, said that doesn't cut it. You have to be willing to say we'll do things well and we will seek to be the very best we can. And I think that that's a good uh, tenant for the church.